Canon's anticipated EOS R6 Mark III has sparked much interest, particularly in the mid-range camera market. While Canon has yet to confirm an exact release date, many sources speculate a possible late 2024 or early 2025 announcement. Here's a detailed breakdown of what we currently know and speculate about the rumored Canon EOS R6 Mark III. The R6 Mark III is expected to build on the R6 Mark II's strong foundation, offering some notable advancements aimed at photographers and videographers who desire high performance without entering Canon's high-end, pro-level models like the R3 or the R5. One of the most talked-about potential features for the R6 Mark III is the sensor. Some reports suggest it may inherit a modified version of the 24 1-megapixel sensor seen in the Canon R3 potentially enhancing the camera's low-light performance and dynamic range. This would give it an edge, particularly in comparison to the Nikon Z6 III, which also targets the mid-range market. However, Canon may choose a balance between resolution and speed, as the R6 series traditionally focuses on versatility rather than sheer resolution. Users can anticipate that Canon will likely aim to provide high dynamic range and impressive color fidelity, traits that have been core to the R-series lineup. Canon's mid-range cameras are increasingly popular with content creators, and the R6 Mark III will likely support robust video features to meet that demand. Many expect 4K video recording at up to 60fps with no crop, continuing the R6 Mark II's commitment to quality. 4K 120fps would position the R6 Mark III competitively against cameras like the Sony a7 IV and Nikon Z6 III. Other features include improved codecs and color profiles for video, 10-bit 4, 2, 2 recording, and catering to professional videographers who require flexible post-production options. Autofocus is another area where Canon is expected to shine. The R6 Mark III already offered an advanced dual-pixel CMOS AF system with subject tracking and eye detection. With the R6 Mark III, Canon might introduce enhanced AI-driven autofocus algorithms similar to those in the R3, which excel at tracking fast-moving subjects like sports players and wildlife. This would make the R6 Mark III highly competitive for enthusiasts and semi-professionals who need reliable focus tracking for both photography and video. Canon has kept its R-series design relatively consistent, focusing on robust, weather-sealed bodies that are lightweight yet durable. The R6 Mark III may offer slight ergonomic tweaks but will likely retain a compact, user-friendly build. Photographers might see a few additional buttons or dials for quick access to key settings, enhancing the camera's ease of use. The camera's viewfinder and LCD quality could also see an upgrade, potentially with a higher resolution EVF and a fully articulating rear touchscreen, catering to both stills and video creators. Although the R6 Mark II improved upon the original R6 overheating problem, extended 4K video recording still proved challenging for some users. For many videographers, the lack of confidence in recording duration was a significant limitation. Addressing this could make the R6 Mark III a more serious tool for video professionals. The R6 Mark II's SD card-only slots, while cost-effective, limited the camera's ability to handle higher data rates, which affected continuous burst shooting and high bitrate video. CF Express support in the R6 Mark III would enable it to handle high-resolution footage and extended burst sequences more effectively. While the R6 Mark II's autofocus system performs admirably in well-lit settings, it struggles with consistency in low-light scenarios. Canon users have called for improvements in this area, as competing models from Sony and Nikon perform better in challenging lighting conditions. Sony's a7 IV has been a popular choice in the same category, with its 33 megapixels sensor offering higher resolution and impressive autofocus capabilities. Known for Sony's reliable real-time tracking autofocus, it appeals to photographers and videographers who demand consistent performance. The a7 IV also supports 4K 60p recording with 10-bit color, making it attractive for video work. If Canon can match Sony's real-time tracking, it could attract more users who prioritize autofocus accuracy. Sony's 4K 60p in 10-bit color has been a standard, 
so Canon may need to offer 4K 120fps or even better thermal management to set itself apart. The A7IV's 33 megapixel sensor offers more detail for high-resolution shooting. Canon will need to make a case for sticking with 24 megapixels, likely by emphasizing speed and low-light performance. The Nikon Z63, released recently, has set a high bar with a 24-megapixel stacked sensor, improved AF, and robust video options. Nikon's Z63 offers excellent low-light performance and burst shooting, making it ideal for photographers who prioritize image quality and flexibility in diverse settings. Nikon's stacked sensor is rumored to outperform Canon's in speed, so Canon would need to emphasize its autofocus improvements to remain competitive. The R6 Mark III might hold its own against the Z63 if a stacked sensor could help the R6 Mark III achieve higher burst rates, allowing it to perform on par with the Z63's impressive shooting capabilities. Nikon's autofocus has made strides, but Canon's AI-based subject detection could give it an edge, particularly for sports and wildlife photographers. The Z63 is priced competitively, so Canon will need to keep the R6 Mark III's pricing close to $2,000 or offer compelling features to justify a higher price. While no official price is available, industry insiders expect the Canon EOS R6 Mark III to be priced slightly above the R6 Mark II, which retails at around $2,500. This price estimate aligns with Canon's current pricing strategy for prosumer models, which balances high-end features with affordability. Given Canon's recent product cycles, an official announcement could land by early 2025 if the model follows the timeline of previous releases. This delay has given photographers time to consider whether to invest in the R6 Mark II, now available at discounted prices, or wait for the Mark III's potential advancements. Many users are optimistic that the R6 Mark III's feature set will challenge Sony's and Nikon's offerings in the mirrorless consumer market. Users are particularly keen on seeing Canon's improvements in continuous shooting speed, hoping this will make the camera even more capable of capturing fast action shots than its predecessors. There's also a sentiment that the neural network noise reduction could provide Canon with an edge in low-light performance. On the flip side, some users remain skeptical about the accuracy of these early rumors, especially around video capabilities. While Cinema Raw Light support sounds promising, some users have noted that Canon has previously scaled back on video specs in prosumer cameras before its official release, potentially to protect its cinema line. Hence, while the excitement is palpable, a bit of caution remains regarding the final specs. Canon's rumored improvements address many of the criticisms aimed at the R6 Mark II, particularly regarding its video capabilities, autofocus, and handling. The potential addition of a stacked sensor, enhanced autofocus, and improved thermal management would make it a compelling upgrade for those needing a reliable hybrid camera. In our view, the R6 Mark III's success will depend on how well Canon differentiates it from the R6 Mark IIi and how it fares against stiff competition from Sony and Nikon. Canon has long been a leader in intuitive design, and if they can balance new technology with user-friendly features, they'll have a winner on their hands. However, photographers who already own the R6 Mark II might not feel a pressing need to upgrade unless they're specifically looking for better video performance or faster burst shooting. For those new to the Canon ecosystem or upgrading from older models, though, the EOS R6 Mark II could be a compelling choice when it arrives. Thanks for tuning in. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, remember to subscribe as well.